Are you here? Hmm, first time? Oh, been here before. Well, either way, welcome to the Paul Leslie Hour. Today we've got an all-time favorite singer, recording artist, and New Orleans legend with us. Yes, Clarence the Frogman Henry is here, making his third appearance on the Paul Leslie Hour. I guess you can tell Paul really loves the Frogman. And there's good reason. Just listen to Frogman's great songs. Ain't Got No Home, I Don't Know Why I Love You, But I Do. And oh yeah, you always hurt the one you love. We're definitely honored to welcome Clarence, the Frogman Henry, back again on this episode. The Frog's going to be reminiscing about his pal, Jimmy Buffett, about the late Fats Domino, and oh yeah, his upcoming appearance at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Clarence the Frogman Henry will be at the Blues Tent on Friday, April 28th. We'll see you there, okay? For sure. Hey, we'd sure appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the Paul Leslie Hour on YouTube and also like us on Facebook. We like you on Facebook. You can help us a lot as we push into our 20th year this fall. I wonder if Paul is ready. <laughs> he looks ready. He's got that look in his eye. All he's got to do is start talking. Hey, take over, Paul, baby. Speak. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure and an honor when you're in the company of a legend. And right now, for the third time, I'm speaking with one of, I think, the greatest recording artists in American music. I'm talking about Clarence Frogman Henry. Mr. Henry, how are you, sir? Oh, pretty good. I got my ups and downs, you know. Like I say, I'm 86 years old. I made it 86 last month on St. Patrick's Day, March the 19th. That's right. 86 years old. 86. Still singing. Well, I only do the jazz fest. I'm retired, but uh, I do the jazz fest every year, and I'm doing it this year on April the 28th. April the 28th at the Blues Tent. Right, right. Right. Now, how many, could you, could you tell us how many times you played the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival? Really, truthfully, <laughs> I think I played every one except one time I was in England. Right. And I missed that one. Mm hmm. But I, I played most all the jazz fests. Mm hmm. What does the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Fest mean to you? It means a lot. It brings out the, the, the thing in, you know, the soul from all different guys and different people you meet that you've been on the road with, you know. Mm hmm. It's a lot of amazing, amazing talent, you included. I'd like to know, you you know, you are somebody who has a very distinctive singing voice, whether you're on the stage or when someone's listening to your records. Who were the singers who really influenced you to make the, the Clarence Frogman Henry sound? It was one guy, a big, fat guy. <laughs> oh, when I was young, a teenager, I loved that guy. When uh, I went to L.B. Landry High School in New Orleans on the West Bank, and when the teachers and the principal be uh, having a, a meeting, the secretary would come down and say, the little boy with the red and black jacket, come and play for the kids in the in the school. And I would get up there, and oh man, I thought I would sing like Fat Domino. You know, I, oh, I, I love that man, Fat Domino. Professor Longhead, too, I care about, but Fat Domino was my man. Tell us about Fat Domino, the person when you went, when you got beyond the, the show business, the, the legend. When I was at his house, this was years and years ago. As most of the people listening know, he has since passed away. God rest his soul. But I told him that I'd been by your house, and Fats Domino's face just lit up. He said, how's the frog doing? Who was Fats Domino? He was a great guy. He, 
you know one thing about Fats Domino? He was a true guy. He didn't kiss. And Frogman doesn't kiss. <laughs> you know, you got to respect him, and he respect you, you know. And in New Orleans, he was Fats Domino, but <laughs> they wanted him to kiss, but he didn't kiss. And and when he died, everything is that down. No, they even name a street behind him. You know the street where he lived at. You know, that Domino, Antoine Domino. I went to his house, and he sit there and he played song for me. And one time he said, "I ain't playing no more. Could you take my song?" <laughs> you know. But I love that man. When I went to Jamaica for the first time, when I came back, I bought him some rum. When he was playing the Apollo Theater. Yeah, and I, everywhere he was, even when he, we were down Bourbon Street, he was playing at Al Hood Club, and I had to play at the 544. I would go down there and see him, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, when you said he, he, he doesn't kiss, what do you mean by that? You know, a lot of people want to, you know, to kiss them, you know, take take what they, you know, they abuse a, a lot of entertainers in New Orleans. Right. Like the guy that, don't do what they say or do like they want them to do. You know, you don't hear about them, you know. And the one that, that you know, kiss, oh, you, oh that, that, yeah, 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 you, you can hear about them all the time, you know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I see. Do you have a favorite Fats Domino song? Blueberry Hill. Great. Great yeah, song. Blueberry Hill. But I sang most all his songs, you know. Fat Domino, Little Richard, and Chuck Berry. Oh, I admire those people. Ray Charles, mm hmm. You know, the Beatles. Oh, but Paul, you know, but Paul. That was my buddy there, Paul McCarthy. Yes, indeed. He and I, and, and the guy that sang for Bill Black Combo, we were the three musketeers. <laughs> and when, when we had a, a break on the show, we try to win his money, me, me and the guy from Bill, uh, Bill Black Campbell, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, Paul was Paul was down home. He was down home, you know. Mm -hmm. And being down home is important. And another artist I admire, I loved her. I mean, out of all the female singers, I love her. When uh, I recorded for Chess Records, and I recorded like, today or yesterday and she recording today and we were playing in Washington DC at the Harvard Theater but she was on Miss the first day and when Leonard Chess brought me to the studio and he introduced me to her he said Etta James he said this is Frogman <laughs> and she stuck her nose up you know <laughs> at me and so when when we did the show I went on first before her and then she came in, and you know, after. And when we passed each other, because our room was next to each other, and I wouldn't speak to her, and she wouldn't speak, to, you know, she wanted to speak to me, but I wouldn't speak to her. And then she said, come here, you. And she, <laughs> she said, I know why you're not speaking. And uh, <laughs> and me and again, oh, man, we love each other. We <laughs> love each other. Mm-hmm. Now, a moment ago, you mentioned Blueberry Hill, and that's a, a very old song going back even before Fats Domino. But I would like to know from you, going way back to like the singers of of yesteryear, like the 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 Bing Crosbys and the Al Jolsons, those kinds of singers, even Sinatra. What did you think of those folks? Bing Crosby, yeah, because I used to I worked at a service station. When I was 15 till I was 18, and uh, me and a, a guy, we used to get on the wash rack and and in and, and on the station, and we used to sing Ben Crosby and, and you know those people's songs. Because mm -hmm. they they were popular then way back in the 40s and in the 50s, the early 50s. Something that's that's unique about the song "Ain't Got No Home," which is something you wrote and recorded. That song has a lot of life to it. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I made that song right here in Gretna on Fort and here in Long Avenue. 
I was playing a little little club with four piece band, Eddie Smith band, because he was the band leader. And uh, I respect my leader. I didn't tell, I didn't say what time he was gonna get off. I didn't disrespect the man that was the leader. So one night we were playing and we were supposed to get off at three o'clock, man, it's about six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock. And I hit a, I mean, that place was packed. I mean, that place in Gretna stayed packed. And uh, I hit a riff on the piano. I told the people, you ain't got no home. I want them people to go home because I wanted to get, get off, you know. <laughs> because the the club on at that time, you know, it, it, thing was kind of a little rougher musician like me, you know. The, the club owner would walk outside when it's time for to get off, you know. And Eddie Smith would ask him to get off. You know, he didn't just walk off the stage when it was time to get off. And the guy would walk out. <laughs> and I hit a riff on the piano. I told the people, you ain't got no home. You know, the frog ain't got no home. The chicken ain't got no home. You know, I tell them people, go home. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy made ain't got no home. Now, that's a song that, there have been a number of other people that liked that song so much that they did their own version. Like Buddy Holly did that song. The band Madeline Kahn sang it on Saturday Night Live. Has there been a version of one of your songs that impressed you the most? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I got three songs, but two of them mostly. Ain't Got No Home and, and uh, I Don't Know Why, but I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the people, they're crazy, you know, they're crazy about it. I, I, I watch uh, Facebook all the time, and, and these different people singing Frogman song, you know, and it makes me feel good. Oh, I start smiling, <laughs> and especially this lady, you know, he said, I ain't got no, I got a mother, you know, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes me feel good. <laughs> it makes a lot of us feel good. Your songs have been in a couple of movies and in a couple of parts where it's a it's a, to me it's a highlight of the movie it's a it's a integral part of the movie. What does it do for a singer or a recording artist when one of your songs ends up on the big screen in a motion picture? Oh, it made me feel so good. Lost Boys, Raging Harlem, uh, Dinah. And, and and especially for Gump, when 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 he the pull the woman out, out the car and he gonna beat up that man, <laughs> it was it was nice, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess it helps the royalties too. You you wouldn't believe it. I still get royalties, you know. You just think over oh, forty fifty years you're getting royalties, you know. And I got one royalty, <laughs> a big old check. <laughs> zero zero. Oh. That's the one that with, the, with a little show in, in uh at the Smithsonian, you know, in Washington DC. They send me a, a check every every <laughs> every six months. Mm hmm But I get two dollars, five dollars, you know, two hundred, you know, mm hmm But I still get a check. Mm hmm There is a song that a lot of people have recorded originally written by Alan Toussaint. And I think your version of A Certain Girl is one of the best ever. No kidding. I it, love it. That makes you feel good. Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, I got a lot of respect for Alan Toussaint, Paul Gayton, and my music teacher at L.B. Langer High School because he the one put me with the, the uh, Bobby Mitchell, you know, and started me singing, you know, with with a band, and and then Bob Asif, he was my manager, but he worked for a booking agent. But he would, to me, I respect him as my manager, till he died. You know, these four people really helped me in my career: Bob Astor, Paul Gayton, Alan Toussaint, and Mister William Houston, Senior. I'm hoping you can tell us about. Has there been someone who you always wanted to do a duet with, a duet partner? 
Uh, it was some, a couple of guys in England. I don't forget them right now. I can't think of it. I know I can see them. You know, it's two brothers. And I recorded for them, you know. And I would do a duet with them. Mm -hmm. Did you ever want to do a duet with Jimmy Buffett? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that was my man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a good friend of mine. What did you think when you heard his song, Saxophones, that mentioned you? You know, when he said that I was like an idol to him, oh, man, it, it, and I met him. I met him in California when, when I was playing, and, and I went to his place, you know, in, in uh, Alabama. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and then in New Orleans when he, had a club in New Orleans in the in the French Quarter. Right. Mm. Uh, he he told me he loved the frog. You know that made me feel good. Oh yeah. Now tell us about. You know you're going to be performing as we said at the beginning of the show, Friday, April twenty eighth, at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, at the Blues Tent, folks. Now, Quint Davis has been at this for a long time. What's it like when you run into Quint Davis? I I I, I stand neutral on 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 Quint. Quint is a funny guy. Quint crazy. I, every time I do my show at the Jazz Fest, would you believe Quint is there? You know, Quint is there watching my show. And I, I met him in, on a trip when we was coming home one time, you know. But he, 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 he I don't know, he's kind of cool with me. Hmm. There's one duet that you did on stage that I've seen this on YouTube. It's very interesting. You performed with the late Rush Limbaugh. Now, there's a man. He made me also, you know. And my, my relatives had gone down a little bit, and he brought him back up. And Russell Limbo, I got a lot of respect for him. You know, he he, he the people talk about what he say he is, but Russ Limbo respected me, and I respected him. You know, Russell Limbo lost a lot of jobs before he became a real Russell Limbo. I heard about you know, different things that he didn't make it. And when he got with me and then he started saying different things, that, that's when Russ got very popular, you know. But Russ Limbaugh is a 100 with me, and he responsible, you know, for my career also, you know. Mm -hmm. What was he like when you were just around him face to face? Would you believe he, like he would, Pay me like a, whatever my salary was. I asked for. Plus, Limbo gave me two hundred dollars extra. <laughs> That's nice. You, would you believe that Russell Limbo in California sent me <laughs> some kind of liquor that I had never had high class liquor. You know what I mean? Russell Limbo had a lot of respect for me. You know, that's man. He was down home. I got a lot of respect for Russell Limbaugh. Have you received a compliment through your many years in the music business that has meant the most to you? I receive a lot of compliments from different artists and different people, and it makes me feel good. And, and when I look at Facebook and see all these people singing my song and talking good things about me, it makes me feel good, you know. I feel like I'm on top, you know. And the only thing that hurt me, you know, I don't know if I should say it, but the people that I went all out for, they disappoint me. Hmm. But I, that right now, I'm I'm disabled, that I can't walk. You know, I need a, a wheelchair and a and walker. And it, 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 it's a full people that came and rescued me was a lady named Patricia Thomas. 
and a homeless guy named Devin Livingston, and my daughter from Nashville, Wanda Wright. Her mama was Roberta Wright. That was oh the best wife I ever had, and also my nephew Leroy. I call him Pookie Charles. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lady, a lady Bell, I, I thought was in my corner, you know. But these four people, they really stuck with me. It, and it's not all about a dollar. <laughs> right. A lot of people want, you know, they do things for you for money, but not these four people. You know, Leroy, Patricia, Devin, and, and Wanda, you know, no money. But like I say, there's a God above, and I love God, you know, and I believe in God. Just like my house. I got a lady coming today for the storm. Half of my house was destroyed. I mean, it, the, the clothes on the rack, hanging on the rack came down on the floor. And the, my house was destroyed, the roof and thing. And this lady came over and called somebody on the radio and you would you believe whoever fixed my house I don't know who did it but I, I'm on a high you know there was a lot of stuff that was missing but anyway my house was well fixed back together mm -hmm. and I think this lady she on her way over here she'll be here by one o'clock today what would you say, Frogman, to any of your fans that are tuning in here? What I'll say to my fan, I love all my fans. I'm you know, I'm true to my fan. You know, I'm not I'm not a phony, you know. I'm for real. I love my people. I love to entertain people. And they did me a lot and I had a good life. I had a Good, tremendous life. I've been all over the world. I met a lot of people. I met in different countries like New Zealand and Sweden. I love those two countries. Oh, oh, but I love those people. They love me. They showed me, you know, I went in England and Germany and a different one, you know, but Sweden and New Zealand, those are my two countries. <laughs> Well, hello to everyone from those countries who's tuned in with us. And Frogman, Mr. Clarence Frogman Henry, thank you so much for spending time with us. It's always an honor, a pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure, great pleasure. And I enjoy my, my and I, to my folk and my people and my fans, I love you. And I, I'm 86 years old. I don't know how long I got long to live. But I thank everybody for buying my record and telling your friends about it and your family. And if you want a picture, this all you got to do is 3309 Lawrence Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70114, and I'll send you pictures. Very nice. Very, very classy move. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, sir. God bless. Bye-bye. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed our program, consider telling a friend about it. The Paul Leslie Hour is made possible through people just like you. So you want to keep the show going, right? Go to thepaulleslie.com. That's thepaulleslie.com. Click on Support the Show. And thanks to everyone who contributes. Performance of the intro music is courtesy of John Primerano, The Entertainer, written by Scott Joplin. End credit theme music is courtesy of John Primerano, the traditional song, Corina, Corina. Your announcer is Dan Gold. Hey, that's me. The show is hosted and produced by Paul Leslie. And we'll see you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour.